for 12 years and have been helping other people learn how to airbrush for about five years now. And they start out at, from about age five to people in their 60s I've helped learn how to airbrush. And basically the way we go about it is just through a series of exercises that will help you learn how to control the airbrush. To do these exercises, I found that newsprint works, works real well, and it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, just about any hobby or art store has it. Get the biggest size possible. As far as paint goes, I think to start out with, you should use an airbrush-specific, airbrush-ready paint, an illustration paint like uh, Comart by Medea or Golden Airbrush Colors. Craytex and Aquaflow and some of the other textile paints are fine, but you tend to get a lot of tip dry with them. With the illustration type paint, you won't get that, so you're not going to be fighting your airbrush while you're trying to learn. So pick up on some Comart or Golden Airbrush colors to do these with. For these exercises, I'll be using a bottom feed dual action airbrush. You can use a gravity feed if you like. Uh, really doesn't matter. You can accomplish it with both. Um, to hold the airbrush, you hold it much the same as you do a pen um, with your index finger on top of the trigger. Dual action is down for air and back for paint. So when you do both, pull, push down and pull back, you're going to get both air and paint. Okay, if, to keep the hose out of your way, you can drape it over your forearm like this. To first start out, just get the feel of your airbrush. Just play around on some paper and get the feel for it. Remember, it's down for air and back for paint. The further back you pull, the more paint you're going to get. The closer you are, the smaller the dot. The further away you are, the larger the dot. So just play around with it and get the feel for it for a few minutes. With an airbrush, you want to use your whole upper body. Leave your wrist locked. Uh, it's going to be a lot steadier. You're going to get a lot cleaner, nicer detail than trying to use your wrist. So you use your whole upper body. I have my compressor set at about 25 pounds of pressure, which is plenty for what we're doing with this illustration type paint. First thing we're going to do is just basic line. Air on, you want to start the airbrush moving before you start applying paint. So it's air on, move, paint, and you almost near the other side, your finger goes forward, you shut the paint off, the air is still on and you're still moving, you follow through. So we'll do it once more. Air on. Start moving, start applying paint. As you get near the other side, push your finger forward, paint off, air still on, and you follow through. We'll just do a few lines on this page. Uh, do as many lines as it takes to get comfortable with it. What you don't want to see is stopping and starting points where you did the line. You want to see nice clean line, no stopping, no starting points. So we're just going to do a couple pages of nothing but lines. You start moving, air on, start applying paint as you get near the other side. Your finger goes forward, paint off, and you're still moving the airbrush. Go back to the other side, same thing. Start moving, pull back for paint. As you get towards the other side, shut the paint off and follow through. Try to make them as straight as possible. Um, usually if you use two hands and hold the airbrush like I am, it's a little, a little better. Again, notice how I'm using my whole upper body, not just my wrist or one arm. Uh, you get a lot steadier using your whole upper body than you do if you would just try using your wrist. Just do several pages of these until you're comfortable doing lines. Once you've mastered lines, you go on and start doing dots. St keep your airbrush square to the paper and level. And all you want to do is nice round dots. You're not shutting the air off in between, you're just shutting the paint off. Dot, paint off and move. Dot, paint off and move. Dot, 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 dot. This isn't a race, do it slow. Nice round dots. Notice how the air never goes off. You get a lot better control with the airbrush if you get in the habit right now of once you start airbrushing, never turning the air off. It's not. Once you start, you leave the air on and all you're doing is applying paint. Do a couple pages of these dots. 
nice and round. You don't want them to look like this. It's too much paint. A little bit of paint, nice round dot. Like I said, this isn't a race. Take your time and get used to it. Notice how the closer you get to the paper, the smaller the dot's going to be. The further away you get, the bigger the dot's going to be. And again, I'm using my whole upper body, not my wrist. Now that you've mastered dots and lines, let's put them together. Just randomly over your whole page, just put dots. Anywhere and everywhere. The air is never off. You're using your whole upper body. Just back and forth with your finger to apply paint. Nice round dots. Once you have this accomplished, let's just connect the dots with lines. Air on, dot, no, air, no paint, and then your next one. You're moving, the air is on, and then you start with the paint. Moving, air on, start with the paint. You don't want to make the dot a different size by doing this. You just want to airbrush to the dot, shut the paint off, stop. Start again, airbrush to the next one, to the next one, and so forth. Do a couple pages of these till you feel comfortable with them. Again, the air isn't on and off, on and off. The air is always on as I'm airbrushing. Not using my wrist, I'm using my whole upper body. Now that you've mastered dots, lines, and connecting the dots with lines, We'll work on shading. What I want you to do is just shade the whole entire paper in, stay about an inch from either side. You want to stay back five or six inches. Again, the air, once you start airbrushing, the air remains on. It's just you start moving the airbrush, paint, 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 shut the paint off, and you're still moving the airbrush, you're following through. You want a nice even tone over the whole page, fog it in, uh, without being able to tell there were different passes doing this. So I'll do it real quickly and we'll go back over it. Air on all the time. You're back five or six inches. You're not plastering the paper with paint. You're just giving it a nice even tone, a nice light color of paint. Um, it's easier to build your color up and make it darker. If you get it too dark to begin with, it's almost impossible to lighten up. So all we want to do is shade the whole paper in a nice even tone. Now if I did make a mistake, and you could see a pass, something like that, if you do that in a painting, you're going to have to pretty much start over. Once you set a line like this with an airbrush, it's almost impossible to catch up either side and make it as dark. Because as you add to this side, you're also adding to the dark line, and you're never going to get it caught up. So shading is very important. Take the time to learn it now. The air is never off. My finger is going back and forth as I near the edges. My finger shutting the paint off, shutting the paint off. So, just very lightly fog the whole thing in. Again, it's easier to go back and make something darker than it is to go back and try and lighten it up. So, this is a very important um, airbrush skill, being able to shade and apply paint where you want, when you want, and with the desired effect, you've got to get this down. It's really not that hard. Just take your time. It's not a race. 